Hey kids, welcome to another video. This is lesson 19 in module two. Still in module two, it's a long one. Uh, this one is about dividing. And so we actually, it's very exciting. We're actually getting into the standard algorithm and we're gonna take a look at simple, simple division with two and three digit dividends. That means on the inside of the bracket by multiples of 10, so they're gonna keep it real simple on the outside of the bracket, with single digit quotients, that means a single digit on the top, and then we're gonna to connect to this written method using the division family members, the dad, mom, sister, cousin, brother, and using the steps divide, multiply, subtract, compare, bring down. And so we're gonna make sense of all this uh, stuff that we've been doing in the previous few lessons about like, why are we estimating with our, why do I round the divisor first? Why do I estimate something? And it's always to help you figure out what goes in the quotient. So we're gonna use the standard algorithm today. And so for example, if I had 70 divided by 30, if I was gonna estimate, I would say, well, 30 could fit into 70 approximately two times. Two, the reason we do this step is to help us get the two that goes in the quotient up here. Once you get that, then you can proceed using the steps of the division family. Multiply two times 30, now we have some larger divisors, remember multiples of 10. Using 60, two times 30, uses 60 out of the 70 in the set. Now that means that I have 10 left. This is really an important step to compare because you have to have less than your divisor amount when you're doing long division here. Now, today we're gonna to be stopping at this point, putting this remainder up here, and then we're gonna do what's called a check. And so in the check step, you're gonna take the outside numbers, which is the divisor and the quotient, and today our quotients are gonna be real simple, so it's gonna be the divisor on top times the quotient. Typically, you can, you can do it either way, but you put the one with more digits on the top, and you're gonna multiply those. Then you're gonna add the remainder and that should give you your dividend. Notice the little line connecting right here. And so you're gonna make an active check out of this problem. For example, 30 times two is 60, that's these two, and then you get this plus the remainder, and then you get your 70. So the dividend is 70, and when you go back and check, you should match. There are a couple other warm-up problems. 430 divided by 60, we're actually doing the real division today, not just estimating. But when you estimate, it's only to figure out what goes into the quotient. So it's kind of like, I wish I had. <laughs> so if you have a divisor like 60, I wish I had a multiple of six. Instead of 430, if you use 420, then that's gonna be below. One thing that we did in estimating was sometimes we went up and sometimes we went down. But in our quotients today and in long division, you're gonna wanna make sure that you are less than this dividend that you have because you can't have a number here that's greater than the dividend, otherwise your subtraction step would not work out. So quotient, remainder, put that up here and then do your check. Multiply the outsides and then add the remainder to get what you had at the beginning. There's a, just a little note that the whole is gonna be made up of the quotient and the remainder. Okay, just so that you know what we're doing there. And then super quickly, one last problem, it's in the teacher's manual, but it's uh, just kind of for warm up. 572 divided by 90. Again, what is a multiple of nine that's close to slash less than? Remember, if you play that Price is Right game, don't go over. So six times nine is 54, and I don't wanna go over 57. So uh, put your remainder up here. Doesn't matter how big it is, as long as it's less than, your divisor. Multiply with the outsides, get that first number that you would get from multiplying the quotient times the divisor, add the remainder, and you should end up having this same number that was in your dividend. So those are the notes, and then we'll get started in the book. This is mine's on 247. I hope yours is too. So um, we have not much room to complete these problems. So if you wanna section each one off, it might help you stay a little bit organized uh, with your work so that you're not getting involved in the next problem's work. And remember that we are using the actual problems, so don't round everything. Just 
think about it. So if I have 80 on the inside and 30 on the outside, then what I need to do is figure out how many 30s can fit into 80, or 30 times what would get me close to 80, but without going over. That's that game show part. So I can get two 30s, and if I multiply, you can write your steps of the division family. Divide, multiply, subtract, compare, bring down. And so we did the divide, now I did the multiply, put that answer here, subtract, I get 20. Remember to compare. I need this to be less than my divisor, and it is. So I'm gonna put my remainder right here, remainder 20, okay? Just like I did here, it doesn't have to be connected. It looks like it's connected, but it's not. And then we're going to check. The check step is very important. Outside the bracket, we have 30 times two. You can also do 30 times two and get 60 this way. Okay, and so if you end up with your 60, now don't forget, you have to add that remainder. And when I get 80, I make that com quick compare to make sure that I, I took it apart and then I put it back together in the, in the proper way. Okay, and if you get the 80, then it should be all right. So straight out and then you can add this way. And if I had more room, I would do that. But again, kind of squishy, so just do your best to make it work. Remember that this is the dividend and this is the divisor, so 50 is on the outside of the bracket, 71 is on the inside. We're not using the decimal and we're not annexing zeros in this activity. We're just thinking about what do we put in the quotient and actually you should be thinking about where it goes to. So if I have 50 and I'm trying to divide uh, 71 by 50, this is not a very big dividend. I can only fit 150 into 71. Then I can do my subtraction and I get 21 left over, remainder 21. Take your uh, outside numbers, divisor and quotient, multiply, get 50 again, and then add your remainder. Do this double check and then I've got 71. See, it's nice and easy. I bet you guys are going, oh my gosh, I can totally do this. Yes, you can, you can totally do this. 30 is my divisor, 270 is my dividend. You might be thinking, hmm, 27 is a multiple of three, but where do I put the number in the quotient? And that's a legit question. Okay, so up here, we only had our number in the quotient over the ones place, right? Okay, so when you see the 27, are you thinking, do I put my answer here? Do I put it here? Do I put it here? Does it matter where I put it? Is this just an answer line? This is not just an answer line. You have to think about how many 30s can fit into 270. And so really, we are still gonna be in the ones place because 30 cannot fit into 27. It's gonna be right here for the nine 30s. Now look at when you multiply. Nine times zero is zero, nine times three is 27. We have the exact answer, there's no remainder. So in your check, it's just gonna be the 30 times nine, and you get 270. And when you compare, like that's, that's all there is. So there's nothing left to add. If there was a remainder, we would add it, but there isn't one. So when you have an exact dividend, that's how it's gonna look. Okay. 80 into the 643. And remember, we're not estimating these today. Don't estimate, actually do the division. So how many times can I fit eight into 643? And you might be thinking, well, a compatible number would be 640 because 64 is a multiple of eight. And I would say, bravo. In the ones place, you can put your eight. Eight times zero is zero. Eight times eight is 64. So we got as close as we could get without going over. Do your subtraction and see that there's a remainder of three. In the check, 80 times eight. Eight times zero is zero, eight times eight is 64. But add the remainder, then you get 643. Compare it and we're happy. And every time you compare, you can put a little star or happy face or whatever makes you happy because I'm happy that we got the right answer. 90 on the outside, 215 on the inside. Remember to think about multiples of this number 
with your first two digits. So how many nines can you put into two? None of them. 21? Hmm, well, I could get a couple. But where do I put it? What if I put my two here? What would I end up with? I would end up with two times zero is zero and two times nine is 18. I'd be too squished. So the two doesn't go in the tens place. It's gonna go right over here in the ones place. Two times zero is zero. Two times nine is 18. Now you have a big subtraction problem with uh, a remainder, but it's still less than um, my uh, divisor. Let's check it out. Five minus zero, zero, five, sorry, five. And then the difference between 18 and 21, like I'm looking at this thing as a whole. Yes, you can go column by column and do your subtraction, take one and give 10. But when it's the last digits and they're real close like this, the difference between 18 and 21, 19, 20, 21, it's just three. So you have three left over, or you can do your standard uh, subtraction with regrouping. Put your remainder. Remember, we're always comparing, make sure that this is less than 90. Now in our check, 90 times two, there's your 180, and these are always gonna match before you add your remainder. And then add this, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then we get 215, ta-da. And that was our dividend to start. So always very happy when we do that comparison. Second page here. Oh, it's super out of focus, but it's gonna focus. Yes, thank you so much, lovely little computer. Okay, Terry says the solution to 299 divided by 40 is six with a remainder of 59. So here's the work. His work is shown below. This is really important. This is on tests, you guys, so pay close attention. Explain Terry's error in thinking and then find the correct quotient using the space on the right. Okay, so you might say six. Okay, if he puts six here, six times zero is zero, six times four is 24. This is all correct. And then you do your subtraction and you do your subtraction. That's right too. My gosh, Mrs. Sennis, what's happening here? I don't understand. And I would say if you've done your division, multiplication, subtraction, then we would be at the compare. And right here, what's that? And what's that? Now here, the problem is that this is greater. 59 is greater than 40. This is a problem. This is where I would get my pen and I'd be like, Oh, dudes, you know, check it out. Like, that's too big. It's too big. That's too big. So the problem here is that this is too small. And therefore, the remainder is too big. You can't have a remainder that's this big. What it means is you have to try something else. So I would bump this up to a seven, and then we can try again. Seven times zero is zero, seven times four is 28. Look, we're still less than 299, but I hope we're a lot closer than 59. Nine minus zero is nine, nine minus eight is one, and oh, look, now when I compare, again, look at this sign. I need 19 to be less than 40. This one was the opposite, it was greater than, but this one is less, R19. So we explained Terry's error in thinking and we found the correct quotient, so this one is all finished. So Terry didn't compare. And that's basically the long and short of it, and that's the problem, okay? So now you've identified that. This is gonna come up again, so don't, don't forget about that, okay? A number divided by 80, it's divided by 80. A number, mystery number, divided by 80 has a quotient of seven with a four as a remainder. Let's put this in bracket form and see if it makes any more sense. A number divided by 80, mystery number in here, has a quotient of seven with a remainder of four. Find the number. So. What did we do on the opposite side of this? We did a check. Now when you get your check, and if you have the quotient, and if you have the divisor, and you have the remainder, you can get the dividend. 
let's use the check. Aha, uh -huh. that's your strategy. This is your strategy, circle it, make a bubble, okay? And let's take all the information that we have here. 80 times seven, seven times zero is zero, seven times eight is 56, and then add that four. Five, six, four. That's what should go in here. Remember, because we compare, we multiply the outside, add the remainder, and you should have something to compare it to. This time we don't have anything to compare it to, so we're hoping we're right, but we are right. So it should be 564. And your method is to use the check to find those. Last problem already. Hooray! While swimming a two kilometer race, Adam changes from breaststroke to butterfly every 200 meters. How, oh, notice K, M, and M. Watch out, watch out. How many times does he switch strokes during the first half of the race? So first of all, let's make everything in the smaller unit. So I wanna know how, uh, two kilometers would be how many meters, okay? Because if everything is much more specific, then we can, uh, I always like to use the smaller units if I can. So how do you do this? Remember, it's two times one of the old, and then same two times the equivalent of the new. So one kilometer is how many meters? Well, it's a thousand if you remember that. Remember um, three place value positions from meters, one, two, three. And then that'll give you 2,000 meters. So now let's take our 2,000 meters. Oh yeah, if you like these videos, click subscribe and come back again. I am trying to help you guys as much as possible. And we're going to divide this by the every 200 meters that he changes stroke, okay? Now I've got something with two zeros here and lots of zeros here. So I could divide each side by 100. Remember, that's our strategy to get rid of a pair of zeros on each side. And that leaves you with 20 divided by 2. Well, and that's all the meters. So then 20 divided by 2 is 10. And so how many times does he switch strokes? He switches 10 times in what? During the race. But what is the question asking? Oh, the first half. Okay, so if this is the whole race, the 2,000 meters divided by 200 meters switching every time, watch out for this last part. How many times does he uh, switch strokes during the first half? So you're basically just gonna take half of 10 equals five. So he switches five times in the first half. There you go. There you have it. So anyway, oops, and I forgot to have all the lights on, but that's okay, because it's a super fast video today. So I hope this is helpful, and we are gonna love dividing after lesson 19. Come back again, we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.